Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And this is exciting because what we're going to talk about is a Unify OS 3.0.20 for the Dream Machine, the original Dream Machine, and the Dream Machine Pro. So finally, we are very close to, if not at, feature parity between the original um, UDM which looks like a UDR, but has uh, no PoE, has um, no capability to run any other apps, but runs Unify like it is going out of style. The Unify network application runs it like a boss. And then you have the UDM Pro. So we're pretty much at a software parity. Of course, there are hardware differences. But if uh, you're not excited about this, you definitely should be. So let's take a look. Here is the official release page. So it just went into actual GA. It was a release candidate and just went into GA either this morning or last night. It was very soon. I, I waited because I've seen some RC stuff and, and uh, early access stuff change. So I wanted to wait until this was out. It hasn't been pulled, which is great news, which means you will see it if you haven't seen it already for your UDM or UDM Pro, you will see it. So some of the main things that we've got is that automatic ad blocking that we looked at on our UDR and the WireGuard VPN server. I'm really excited about the WireGuard VPN server. And even down here, it tells you, WireGuard is a high-performance VPN server found in your network applications teleport and VPN section that allows you to connect to the Unify network from a remote location. If you are currently using the L2 TP VPN server on your Dream Machine, we recommend switching to WireGuard. Um, so I will tell you, I've been using WireGuard double natted. Now, it won't work through CGNAT, but double natted, WireGuard has been working pretty well. So what else did they do? They redesigned some application. They added that... the. Uh, ad blocking, they added admin activity to the system log, storage events, cloud connection, added the trigger logs, added support for DHCP client option 77 and 90. I'm not exactly sure <clears throat> what that is. Here's a big one. Upgraded the, the Debian distribution to Bullseye, so they upgraded that underlying operating system. Upgraded Node.js, PostgreSQL. Updated password rules for local accounts to have at least 12... 12 characters, they allow a space and only allow strong local level passwords. That's good. Updated the GOIP database, traffic identification signatures. So when you see the traffic being identified, all kinds of stuff. Uh, let's see. They added the VPN client routing, added support for open VPN tunnel and the traffic routes, uh, added open VPN tunnel and traffic rules. So unless you're doing dynamic routing, and high availability, which high availability is supposed to be coming soon. But unless you're using BGP or OSPF, which most of the people running Unify aren't, what's stopping you from putting in a UDM, UDM Pro, UDM SE, UDM, uh, UDR, Unify Dream Hall? What's stopping you at this point, right? Um, improve the OS backup, restore resiliency. I'm not going to uh, read all of these things. But uh, I'll leave a link to this. So let's hop over. I updated my UDM Pro. I don't have anything else hooked to it. I've factory defaulted it. I've been moving things around. If you've been here for a while, you know that uh, I lost a receptacle and parts of the lab have been powered off because electricity has been so high. But um, you can see that um, it is now updated to 3.0.20. So if we come in here to the settings... Zoom in a little bit on that. And we'll go to Teleport and VPN. And we were testing Teleport on this a long, a long time ago. And Teleport worked so flawlessly because it worked through the Wi-Fi Man app. But now, if we do a Create New VPN Server, WireGuard, OpenVPN, L2TP. And they moved L2TP to the end. Which, yeah, I agree that WireGuard and OpenVPN are much better. They handle... Uh, double NAT better. They handle um, overlapping subnets much better. L2TP does not handle overlapping subnets really well. You can kind of force it and, and cajole it, so to speak. 
But uh, I'm going to do a um, um, video on WireGuard and OpenVPN. And it says a public IP address is required for clients to connect to your VPN server. Eh, I'll show you how to get around that. We can do VPN client. So this is where we can upload our VPN uh, for we've got uh, uh, private internet access and we can route traffic out of that VPN. And then site to site VPN, not much has changed there. Still IPsec and open VPN. I think that they uh, depreciated some, some old um, security stuff that is no longer valid. Under traffic management, it's not here, firewall and security. Here we go. We've got our ad blocking. So we can turn that on for the entire network. So I'm going to go through and I'll do a uh, an entire setup video on this so we can get used to it. So if you've got questions about this, let me know down in the comments. And if you are as excited about this as I am, make sure that you subscribe and you like so that you can stay on top of this because I'm getting ready to go on a real tear with... Um, releasing Unify and network building videos. So we'll have Unify and Grandstream and some Synology stuff. So make sure you give us a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe and come back. Ask your questions and comments down below. If you'd like to support the channel, our affiliate links, Patreon link are down below. And of course, if you need IT consulting, reach out at willyhow.com, click hire us or contact us, fill that information out, and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. Once again, I'm Willie. I want to thank you for being here, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.